morning, everybody. We're getting the truck ready to go. We're headed up to Thompson, Manitoba, about eight hours north of here. Gotta go pick up my load in Winnipeg once we get Old Blue ready to go. Should be a fun trip. Before we get started here, today's shout out goes to our friends at Bull Snot. All of the cleaning products you need to keep your truck shining. Go down below to my description where you can find a link to their website, brownox.com for the US and Bull Snot Canada for up here in Canada. Go check them out if you like a clean rig. Let's get on with the video. We've been at home uh, for a little over a week now. I was hoping to be at home for uh, another couple of days. I have a whole bunch of stuff. As you saw in yesterday's video, <laughs> we put together that treadmill. And uh, I have some stuff here on YouTube to catch up with. Uh, some office work to do, you might say. But, oh well, duty calls. The road calleth to thee. And you must answer the call, right? They got swamped. So I, had, I talked to them and said, hey, I need to get all of this stuff done. Uh, and they said, yeah, sure, no problem. And then they called me back later that day, uh, sent me a message saying, hey, they're getting pretty swamped. And I said, okay, well, no problem. No problem, you're getting swamped, I'm your guy. I'll grab one of the loads that needs to go, and this one goes up north. So Thompson, Manitoba, looks like it's sort of in the central part of Manitoba when you look on a map. But to us here in Manitoba, that's in the northern part of the province. I call it the end of the paved road. It's not actually the end of the paved road, but it's the last big city. It's not a big city, but a big town city uh, before you head up into the seasonal access communities up in northern Manitoba, where a lot of those communities up there, you have to only fly in in summertime. There's no roads going there. Or you have to take the ice roads or the winter roads in winter to get there. So uh, we do winter roads as well here. I don't do it personally. I don't want to take Old Blue up there on the winter roads. They get pretty rough. Uh, but we, we do. I have a lot of friends that are up there that were up there, they're closed for the season already. It was a pretty short season. But you can imagine how busy it gets up there because all of their product, as much as they can for the entire year, has to get there on the winter roads when they're open. So it's just truck after truck after truck after truck getting everything in. And during the summer when they need stuff, they have to fly it in, which is a lot more expensive. So the hardest thing about getting going all the time is getting everything into the truck or back into the truck. Because every time I go home for more than a couple of days, for a weekend or for two nights or more, I take everything home, mostly everything home. I take my cooler out of here so I can clean it before I bring it back in. Take all the food out of there, go through it, make sure there's no old food, obviously. Throw that out, keep the good stuff. Uh, I have towels on my floor uh, that keep my floor clean. That, it's not perfect, but uh, it keeps my floor a lot cleaner from all the dirt and everything that comes from getting in and out of the truck all the time. Uh, those come home, they get washed, and then it's quick, pretty quick to vacuum out the truck after that. And... Uh, so you see all of my stuff back there. Usually when I get going, I sort of just throw it all up on the bed there. Nice, kind of organized, but throw it onto the bed and then I get out there, deliver my freight or pick it up, whatever. And at the end of my day, I'll set up my bed. That way I get as much time at home as possible. Otherwise I have to leave home even earlier if I want to set up my bed and put everything away before I leave. I'd rather just get everything into my truck, get out there, stay home as long as I can with my family, rush over to the truck, throw everything in, get going and then you know as we go throughout the day we'll put everything in its rightful spot but speaking of getting going got a few more things to get in here and we got to get this truck out of the shop and out on the road we had some snow overnight and yesterday so we got we got some snow to deal with today but i checked the weather as we go further north there's less snow weird right that's how it is We've got a 53 foot step deck behind us. Speed limit's a little slower than that here, bud. Construction is blind passing. 
<laughs> so our pickup is on the southwest side of Winnipeg. We have a 53-foot step deck behind. It's an empty sea can, from what I understand. A 40-foot sea can. So we're going to put it on the bottom deck there, chain it down, and pull it up to Thompson. I'll be in Thompson late tonight. Sleep there at the Petro Canada. Get this thing off my trailer first thing in the morning and book it back. It's a pretty simple trip. As long as we don't hit any bad weather, as long as the forecast is correct. We're on the south perimeter of Winnipeg, facing westbound right now. We're coming up to that new overpass that they're building on uh, St. Mary's. <coughs> huh. Looks like my lane is ending. about time that they get this done. We talked about this before. I'm really happy to see this. Speaking of bridges, this is old news for you already, I know, but did you guys see that bridge in Baltimore that collapsed after that ship ran into it? That was crazy. If you don't know what I'm talking about or haven't seen it yet, after you're done with my video, go online and look up uh, like Baltimore Bridge Collapse. You'll find it. There's videos of it. Terrifying. People were on the bridge. There's cars and trucks on the bridge. And the, there's this big cargo ship that lost power. And drifted into one of the support beams. And the whole bridge just collapsed into the water. And the water was freezing. I believe they rescued two people. They're still looking for people at the time I'm filming this. But... Worst nightmare, right? You're just driving along on a bridge and suddenly, boom, you're in the water. Like, instant. It's crazy. Grabbing one of these containers in here. Never loaded here before, so uh, no idea what to do. I'm just following the signs. I really appreciate it when shippers and receivers put nice, legible signs with arrows and stuff of where to go. Like, this container loading area, this way. I like that. Good, I can see the next sign already. Container loading area, that way. So many places, you sort of just gotta guess where to go. Oh, someone else is getting loaded here already. That's not one of our guys, I don't think. Nope, that's someone else. That looks over height, don't you think? I brought a step deck, so I wouldn't be over height. All right, so I just talked to that driver up there, and he already called in. There's a phone number uh, on a, a board in front of him there. He already called in, so they're on lunch right now. They'll be here right away. Oh, here comes someone. Oh, no, that's someone else. Probably picking up a container as well. There's my trailer. I throw a 40 footer down there. I'm guessing that guy's getting unloaded because he doesn't have any chains on. He's probably getting unloaded. And there's the machine over there that's going to be doing the unloading. I guess we just got to wait. figured that that would happen though. I was looking at the time and I was thinking, ah, I'm gonna get there right at lunch hour, aren't I? Yep, it's 12.20, so I don't know if they have lunch till 12.30 or one o'clock. That's pretty quick. I still don't know what uh, can I'm loading. I hope they know. <laughs> All I know is it's going to Tom's. I'm next. I feel very important, very special. 
I don't go to these sea can yards very often. These forklifts are huge. The guy here, like, with this forklift, what he's doing there? That's the can he took off of the last truck, right? That'd be fun to operate that thing. There he goes. So he's gonna go find mine. He he knows which one it is. Uh, I don't know which one it is. Uh, I, I don't I don't know anything about it except that it's 40 feet. He asked me if I want it up against the step or the tail of the trailer. I told him put it up against the step. And then once he has it on my trailer, uh, I'm gonna chain it down. I'm gonna cross chain it from top to the bottom. I'm hoping I can reach the top in the back. That's the thing. I wonder how I'm gonna get up there. I want to have a ladder around here or because I want to go from the top corner across and an X in the back same thing in the front and it's just an empty can so that should be enough but uh, we'll, we'll wait and see what they come up with as they or what I come up with really tying it down is my job let's see what I come up with so I've got the sea can on the back I can see it in my trailer or in my mirror there I'm gonna use these steps right there to get the chains hooked onto the top I'll show you what I mean here So it's an empty can, pretty light. I'm gonna use those stairs because I've gotta get the chains hooked up in the corners there, right? So I'll go from that corner there down to here, that corner there down to there. Same thing in the back, crisscross, and then it'll be secured. Okay, we got them in here. Remember when you use these bear trap binders? You gotta have those safeties on there. Crisscrossed in the back, crisscrossed in the front. That'll hold it down and it'll hold it from going forward and back. It's an empty sea can, so very light, like I was telling you. Also wrapped it around slightly on the front here and on the back, it holds it in place. There you go. That ain't going nowhere. And just for fun, as an extra precaution, just throwing a few straps over it as well. Just for an extra peace of mind. The chains are doing all the work, but just in case. west of Winnipeg, grab our fuel here. That'll get us all the way up to Thompson, maybe even all the way back, but at least all the way there. Looks pretty full here today. Busy, busy. In 100 meters, turn right on. Can't manage a road in that. Turn right in 70 meters. I choose this lane. All right, we filled up for 435 liters here in Winnipeg. I have full tanks now. It should be able to get me to Thompson and all the way back, but I am pushing into a wind on the way up, so I'm gonna be burning a little bit more than I'd like to on the way up there. So we'll see when we get up there if I need to fuel up. It's a, it's a lot more expensive to fuel up in Thompson than back down here. So if possible, I wanna get all the way back down here before I refuel again, or just you know, fuel up just enough up there that I can get back here. But it's time to go though. We're officially loaded, tied down, fueled up. Brakes are released. On our way to Thompson. Turn left and then slight left in 130 meters. Now I know how to get back on the road. Thanks, Karen. In 100 meters, slight left on. Can't manage a road in then. 
Turn right into 170 meters. So we'll be arriving oh, eight hours plus at least one stop for bathroom break and such, right? So it's quarter to three right now. Let's just round it up to three o'clock. I'm guessing I should be in Thompson before midnight, between 11 and midnight, probably around 11.30. sort of gets wasted. Here, I want to go around this way, actually. Because behind the building, remember last time we were here, there's this big mountain of garbage, which at that time I was saying that would attract uh, coyotes, wolves. In summertime, it would definitely attract bears. Uh, it's still there. It's still there. So I wouldn't stay here just because of that pile of garbage. Oh, it's gotten bigger. Oh. Check this out. Look at that. All of that behind the building. It's all garbage. Wow. So if that's not cleaned up by the time the bears wake up, you know where the bears are going to be getting their spring snack. I just stopped here for a quick bathroom break. That's all I needed it was just a quick bathroom break. but. I don't understand the garbage behind the place there, like, I'm trying not to be too judgmental here, but at the same time, that's been there for years, that garbage back there, and if you can tell it's been torn apart by animals and stuff, it'd make me question the sanit sanitary conditions inside, if that's how they present the outside. I know they're trying to hide it behind the building, but, I mean, it's your choice. Your choice, it's just a friendly warning to you if you uh, do come up here. Just at nighttime, if you stop here and you're walking from your truck and it's summertime, just be aware there's probably uh, scavengers, including black bears. And you know, depending on what time of year it is, they'll probably have cubs with them because this is where they found food. This garbage is right out there. Uh, this is right at the corner of 60, not 60, 69. It's, uh, Highway 6 in Manitoba and Highway 60. It's just south of that, or just before that intersection. It's the Esso. It's too bad because this place has serious potential. I mean, it's at a great location right at that intersection. Lots of trucks. This is the only road that heads up into northern Manitoba, right? So anything going into northern Manitoba comes right by here. It's an excellent location. But uh, if you don't take care of it, you lose a lot of business. I thought this place was closed down once already, but apparently it's still open. And off we go again. We're actually making really good time. I might even get to Thompson by 10.30 or before 11 at least. That's good. Have a little bit more time to relax. I did 
mention that this is the only highway going up into northern Manitoba, right? We only have one highway to maintain. So that's a good sign. I need that tomorrow. We go all the way to the back here. I could come back further actually. I suppose I could come all the way back here, but yeah, that's where I'm parked anyway. Should be good. I don't want to come back too much further because my truck is on level ground right now, but you can see my trailer 
the passenger side is up a little bit higher. So if I move further back, my truck will be leaning towards the driver's side. And that's the side where I put my head. And you don't want your head lower than your feet, if at all possible. Oh, look, one of my lights. Oh, I'm gonna have to go wiggle those wires again. Oh, it's always something. So thanks for hanging out with me today on my trip up to Thompson. It's time for me to go back there now and uh, put everything away and set it up the way it should be. Gotta be up at about 7.30, 8 o'clock tomorrow morning. Just gonna run down the road where I gotta drop off the sea can. They're gonna take it off. The trailer will be empty. I'm gonna go straight home. So as usual, you know the drill. I asked that if you want to support the channel, the best way to do it, the best free way to do it, is to hit that thumbs up button, uh, hit that subscribe button, and of course leave a comment down below. Let me know what you're thinking, let me know what you thought of my content, let me know what you'd like to see more of. I don't know, go down there and leave a random comment. You know, 10 points to the most random comment. How about that? 10 points. Every day maybe we'll pick a winner at the most random comment. <laughs> Which should be interesting. It helps me out. If you want to go one step further, you can always get early access to my videos by becoming a member. Karen, don't interrupt me. If you want to become a member, uh, you can click the Join Now button below my video or on my main page, and you get early access to my videos as a premium member. Uh, basic member, you get special badges in the comments. Let's turn this off. My GPS. There you go. See, it's kind of nice. She bosses me around all day, but when I get tired of her, I can just turn her off. <laughs> I'll see you tomorrow, everybody. I appreciate you. Take care and drive safe out there. I mean it. <laughs>